Hello, it's Laura Snowden here. That was one of my arrangements of a traditional song called The Parting Glass. And I first came across that song um, because it was one that I did with my folk group, Tyrolis, a lot. And usually in the middle of the song, at some point, um, I'd have a little moment where I'd do a solo. So I'd play a verse of the song on the guitar. Um, but then at some point I was contacted by um, a man called Guy Travis and he was making all these videos of different guitarists and he asked me whether I'd be able to record something for him within the next couple of days um, and whether I could do maybe a folk song arrangement. He thought that might be nice and I was thinking, well, yeah, I don't, don't really have a folk song arrangement but maybe I could take that um, little bit that I normally do for the parting glass um, and extend it. And that was actually the start of me getting really into arranging um, folk songs for the classical guitar and for guitar in general. And what I did was I um, put basically some artificial harmonics at the end as well. I did that a bit on a whim, but I was just thinking, oh, what can I do to extend this? So I added the artificial harmonic section um, that sort of takes it off in a different direction. Um, melodically completely different um, from the main melody of the song. And then that was the version I recorded, so that somehow ended up being the version. Um, uh, for It was just for a video, but then that's what I put in the score in the end and so on. And so I thought maybe today I could talk to you a little bit about those artificial harmonics and kind of how I approach them and how I think of them. Um, what I find really helpful is that if I'm doing artificial harmonics, I really need to be looking at my right hand. Normally, people often look at their left, but for harmonics, it has to be the right because I've got to very carefully um, put my finger just on the right fret, but then also pluck it really carefully with this finger, my ring finger. So it's quite intricate. So what I find helpful is um, to practice it basically not with the harmonics, as if so for this bit. Would practice but um, I wouldn't look at my left hand I'd make sure that I'm looking down here as if I was going to do the harmonics and then that means um, if you can sort of play through the whole section without looking at your left hand at all that's kind of the first hurdle crossed because then when you come to actually put in the harmonics you're going to want to only be looking at your right hand really uh, one thing that I do find is that, you know, you can sometimes think that you need to look at your left hand all the time, but actually when you look away, often um, it's surprising how much muscle memory you have and how much your fingers actually know what to do without you looking at them. Um, the other thing is that um, I sort of mixed a little bit the artificial harmonics and the natural harmonics, um, because the B here you could do the harmonic like that, but actually it works just as well without plucking, without pressing on the left hand note at all and just doing it like that as a natural harmonic at the 19th fret. Um, and so I used that as a way to make the left hand a bit easier. Um, so when I'm doing this, if I'd had to shift every time, That would have been a lot harder. Um, so I used that natural harmonic there just to minimise the amount of trouble for my left hand. It's especially useful here when you have to shift all the way up here, which is quite a difficult shift. Um, but the natural harmonic there just frees up my hand a little bit, gives me a little bit of time to make my way up to here. When I get to these top notes, what I'm doing is doing a little bit of vibrato on them. which is quite an unusual technique maybe in association with harmonics. Well, it's not necessarily what you always think of vibrato on harmonics, um, but I find it can actually be a really nice way of getting them to sing a little bit more, um, helping them to connect um, so they don't sound too technical. Um, so yeah, when I'm getting up here, especially here, because the resonance isn't so great because it's so high up, I find that vibrato can really help the notes to carry and sustain. Um, the type of vibrato I'm using 
is one that gradually grows. So it's, I'll show it to you on a normal note, um, but it's instead of going like this and doing the vibrato straight away, I'm actually playing the note just normally first and then letting the vibrato grow um, and increase in frequency. Which I find can be a really helpful technique, not just on um, harmonics, but on any notes, as a way of really getting um, a melody to sing and to connect. So that's a kind of a fun thing to play around with is like the uh, different speeds of your vibrato, um, the width of it um, and how you make it grow. It's a little bit similar to what singers do. Um, uh, I won't try and imitate it, but when they kind of start a note and then it builds in vibrato as it goes along. Um, just trying to think if there was anything else to say about that section. Um, I think that's everything. Um, now I'm talking about this vibrato thing um, and the resonance and the sustain. Um, that brings me on to talking about the guitar. This is made by Christopher Dean. Um, it's a spruce top guitar um, and the strings are Daddario normal tension. And um, one of the things I just love about this guitar so much is the amazing kind of resonance and sustain that it has, and particularly in these upper registers. responsive I find um, and I can play with all different colours on the instrument so for example these very um, sort of fleshy sounds where I'm just using the flesh of my thumb um, and going right over the fretboards to produce this very warm colour um, or the very opposite where I'm playing really ponticello with my nails but there's just so much variety, um, this amazing response from it. I think that's everything for today. Um, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.